Okay, this is how I built my vocal booth, and I didn't do it alone, I'll tell you that. Um, we live in a very quiet area. Uh, we have a, a quiet basement. It's, it's a nice nice place to build something like this. Um, so that's what I did. Is I built it in this corner of the basement you can see here. And in case you're wondering, all this audio that you're listening to was recorded in the booth after it was completed. So you can see what it sounds like even. So I took these rubber mats and I put them down. These are those foam mats you can buy, you know, for uh, restaurant workers or people that have to stand in one place a lot. And they put these rubber mats down to help their feet. And I had a bunch of them. So I just figured, what the heck, I'll put them down and I'll build my walls on top of those. That way, if there's any vibration in the floor, or, you know, in the concrete or in the whatever, it will help to eliminate some of that, maybe. If not, well, I used them up anyway. And then I added the uh, plastic tarps all the way around the edges so I could keep the sawdust out of the rest of the basement. And I talked to Dennis, and he says, here's the sizes. Let's do it with two by sixes. So I did two by sixes. I got out my chop saw and started cutting. And we started putting them together. Now I'm using construction adhesive on all the connections, and I'm using drywall screws to put it together with. I had a big box of those left over, so I used that, and I didn't want any squeaks or rattles or anything in it, so it's screwed and glued, and that works really, really nice. And it takes a little longer, but it's worth the time. Now, this part, when we go to build in this, I've got to tell you, we had to have some fun. There was three of us to do this. I had a couple of my friends come over that are big, strong guys, and uh, we framed out these two walls you can see standing here that are just studs. We framed those out. We stood them to the sides. We framed out the ceiling. We put the sheathing on top of that. And then we raised that up, put it on top of the two existing walls. And one guy held that up while the other two guys brought in these other walls to stand under it. And then we could line those up and screw them together and stuff. So they got them all screwed together real good. And if you look in the second stud or the first, anyway, it's the next one, the, the one coming in from the right, you see a hole through it. That's part of the ventilation system. I'll tell you about that in a little while. And then it was just a case of, you know, starting to put on the sheathing. And I run all the wiring into it. Now, the wiring on this, the electrical for it, is running off a separate breaker in the, in the, in the breaker box for the house. Um, I run a 20-amp breaker. I got a 20-amp line coming into it. The only thing on that line is this booth. So I don't get any static of somebody else running a, a blow dryer or something off of it because it's the only thing on it is the booth. And I got plenty of power to run it. I've also got speaker wires run through the walls because I wanted to put speakers in for playback, not for mixing because this ain't a mixing room. It's just a vocal booth. And I want to listen to something back. I don't always want to have to wear headphones. I did that for 27 years in radio. And I don't always want to wear them. So if you look down in the bottom right, the far right corner, there's a little white rectangle. That's the vent for the air coming in. And at the back, we've got one. You can see the hole in the the stud right there at the back where the, the vent is on the back side where the air comes through. And I'll tell you all about that when I get to the ventilation part of this. And then it's just putting up the rest of the sheathing after all the wiring is run. Now, all the sheathing, where it comes together, it butts together, we put glue in that joint, and then we put silicone over the joint. So all the corners, everywhere around this thing is sealed up inside so it's airtight, which means it's uh, more um, sound tight, I guess you could call it, whatever. Now, here you are. I've got the lights in. Turn that on. It gives it nice light inside. And the uh, foam panels in the ceiling, 2-inch foam. There is 368 of those. And to get them straight, I just ran some uh, masking tape as an edge to line up with. So I laid out my grid with masking tape, and I could just peel the masking tape off instead of drawing lines all over the ceiling that would stay there for years. And here we've got the uh, speakers are in. You can see the two little black speakers hanging up there. And then we've got the carbon panels starting to go up on the walls. And you can see the one with the white with the pegboard and stuff. That's the, the, the base absorber part of it has the, the, the carbon inside of that. There's like six sections in there. 25 pounds of carbon goes in each one of those. And then I hung them up on the wall with, I think there's about six screws that are four inches long goes through it because it's two inches thick. And then you glue the, the foam panel on the outside. And the foam panels were too big for the size of the 
carbon panels that we were building. So Dennis had me cut off the excess, and I'll show you what I did with the excess in just a little bit, besides putting it across the bottom to make them a little longer. So here we are, and then there's the uh, the the vent. You can see it up on the by the ceiling where the hot air goes out because I like a little fresh air coming in here. Now then, this is the diffuser we built. It's the QD11. A friend of mine has a wood shop, and him and I got together, and, uh, and we took an afternoon, and we built this thing. And we built it out of three-quarter inch plywood for the, the frame part and the back part, because Dennis says do that if you're hanging on the wall, because it is attached to the wall. It's not freestanding like it looks. It looks like it's freestanding on the desk right here. This is the finished booth. And it's not freestanding on there, the uh, the diffuser, because what I did for a desktop is I just got a free desk off of Craigslist, took the top off of it, cut a section out of it that will fit around the diffuser because I've got it on the adjustable um, shelf brackets so that I, if I want to stand up, I can move it up to stand up or I can set it down to sit down, whatever I want to do. And then underneath it to the right is where the, uh, the 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 air comes in for the ventilation. Now let's get to the outside and look at the ventilation on this. You see the silver tube on the floor coming into the side on the right-hand side over there. That's where the air comes in. And you remember that stud with the hole in it? Now that's to the right of that. So the air goes up the inside of that wall, goes through that hole, and comes back down the other side, and then it finally comes into the booth. So it's like having a baffle in there to knock down any extra noise. And the one on the left side where the air is being drawn out, it comes in at the top. We saw that vent. Now it goes down to the bottom through the stud and then comes back up to where you see the pipe coming out. And that box standing there is about three feet tall. And inside of it is a bathroom fan, the quietest one I could find. And I and I put that built that into the inside of it. So it's drawing the air out. And there's two baffles in there to keep any noise from coming back into the room. And I just used the uh, vent part of it that you would see normally see in the bathroom ceiling, mounted that on top of it for the air to come out around it, and it came with a built-in light. So I wired the light in. The light says, hey, you left the power on in the booth. And it tells other people, the booth is in use. Keep the noise down. It's kind of like an on-air light in a radio studio, you know? Now, this is the door. The door is an interesting little character, big character. He's very heavy. Um, all the research I was doing, people talked about the door being the weak part of your vocal booth because it's always too thin. They're just buying a door, a fire door, whatever, and putting it on. So I built this door from scratch. It's built like the rest of the walls. It's two by six studs, three quarter inch plywood. The carbon panel that's on it is actually in it. I, I set it inside of it so that I could have a little bit more room to get in the door whenever I got, I'm not that small a guy and I need some room. So it's set there and then the foam's on the outside. But the extra foam pieces I had left over that I talked about earlier that I cut off, those are inside that door. So they go around that, all the way around that carbon panel. So all of the uh, the door is filled with basically you know acoustic technology to knock down noises. And uh, this black stripe you see down the side over here on the right-hand side of the door, that is a piece of foam rubber. And it's on a 2x6. Now, the 2x6 was ripped end-to-end -end on a 15-degree angle. And we took one half of it and put it on the door, and the other half is the door jam. So whenever they come together, those two angles will mate up. And they both have the uh, foam rubber on them, so it seals up. And then I also put some regular window seal around all of that across the top of it and everything else so that I can keep the noise out. Uh, you close the door, you turn off the light, you do not see any light at all coming around that door. So that's the way the vocal booth was built. That's how she is now, and and this is how she sounds. And the RT60 numbers, I'm sure you were concerned about that. Um, I know from, from what I was able to find on any charts a uh, vocal booth needs to run somewhere between 0.3 and 0.7 seconds um, on your RT60 time. I've checked this one a couple times at 0 0.4, 0 0.5, right in there. So we're right on the mark where we should be with it. Thank you, Dennis, again, for helping me to do this and designing it for me and telling me what to do and, 
And then I just kind of played with it and had some fun, and and it works. So there you go. Thanks again. This is a unprocessed recording, meaning I am not going to do anything to it other than just record it and save it as a wave and send it to Dennis. That's all there is. Just so you can hear what the room is sounding like. And uh, this is a great room. I love the sound in here. It's got a great frequency response. It's nice and even. And uh, Dennis did a great job in all of his recommendations, and I thank him for his help. I hope you enjoyed this. The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald, Chapter 1. In my younger and more vulnerable years, my father gave me some advice that I have been turning over in my mind ever since. Whenever you feel like criticizing anyone, he told me, just remember that all the people in this world haven't had the advantages that you've had. He didn't say more, but we've always been unusually communicative in a reserved way, and I understood that he meant a great deal more than that. In consequence, I'm inclined to reserve all judgments a habit. Now I'm talking towards the laptop. Now I'm talking towards the diffuser. Now towards the laptop. Now towards the diffuser. Now towards the laptop. Now towards the diffuser. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions, and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum, and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.